What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over this problem called Dynamic Array on Hacker Rank. So basically we declare a, the problem says is to declare a 2D array N of empty arrays. They're all zero indexed. We're going to create an integer and set it to zero. Then there's two queries in a queries array. All right, the first one is if it's a one, what we're going to do is we're going to create this variable called index, and it's going to equal to x, x or our last variable, last answer, and then we mod it by n. And then what we're going to do is we're going to append y to this answer. Append the integer y to this array, array at index idx. The second query we could do is to x, y, which is in this case we do the same thing, where we get the index, which is going to equal to x, x or last answer mod by n. And then we're going to assign the variable, the value array at index at y mod size of our index to last answer. And then we're going to store this new value into our answer array. In the end, we're just going to return our answer array. So I'll just show you guys how, how to do this, the code. We're just follow, literally following these steps. So the first thing you want to do is create your two dimensional array of size n. So that's how you do that here in C++, you do vector vector r n vector integer okay because it's a integer integer here the next thing you want to do is create your last variable your variable is equal it's called last and they want it to be set to equal to zero so that's what we do here we set our last variable last is going to equal to zero then they say they want to create an answer array right array of answer and then to to literally just uh, return that in the end so we're going to create an empty array called answer here it's an integer now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through our queries so remember there's two types of queries in each query it's uh we're going to loop through our queries array and in each query there are two types one is a query with a value of one then x y and the second one query is a query of value two and then x y so in this case what we're going to do is we're actually going to get both of these values so um the first value of x is x is going to equal to queries at i at 1. And the reason why it's i at 1 is because if you look here at the values here, okay, so if you see here, each of the query very uh, queries has a form of 1xy, which is an array that has values 1x and y. So the value of x is going to be at index 1, okay, because the value of one is at index zero, the value of x is at index one, and the value of y is at index two. Right, so what we first have to do is let's actually get each of the values of x and y by just indexing them. So we're going to index x is going to equal to queries at, at i at one, and then the query for y is going to equal to queries at i at two, so zero, one, two. So that's what we do here. We're going to set the queries at integer x is going to equal the queries at i at 1 and integer y is going to equal the queries at i at 2 and I, I already explained why it's at 1 and 2 is because each of these values are, are arrays so 0 1 2 okay so yeah i is the current query by the way because this query is a 2d two dimensional so once we get our values of x and y uh, we need to create an index variable so they said here um, your index is going to always equal to x, x or last mod by n. So that's the same case for both of them. So I'm going to decide to do it first. Okay. Because no matter what, what we do, we still have to do it anyway. So I'm going to put it outside of the if statement. So that's what I do here. So I create integer index is going to equal to x. And this is how you xor. To xor, you use this uh, caret symbol. So I take x, xor with last which is last is our last variable. And I take this answer and I mod it by n. And that's going to give us our index. Okay. All right. So that's our index in this line, this line of index. Index is equal to this. Okay. Now what we need to do is that once we have this, right, the index, um, we actually have to do the individual statements for both of them. So we need to check uh, which statement we're going to do. So to do that, we have to actually check if the query is equal to 1. Because if the query is equal to 1, we just have to do these two statements, the first two statements. And if the query is equal to 2, we have to do these three statements, right? These three statements. 
So to do the value to check if the query is equal to one, we just do queries at i at zero is equal to one. And then else if we check if queries at i at zero is equal to two, because the first value at each of these arrays is either one or two, okay? Like at each of these queries is either one or two for both of these situations and circumstances. So now that we have this, we need to do the individual uh, individual thing. So in the case of when the query is equal to one, we need to append the integer y to array at index. So to do that, all I did was here is uh, array at index. We're gonna push back the value of y, which is gonna push back the value of y into array at index. The reason this works is because array at index is a two dimensional array, see right here. And you could do a pushback at the index. Now, um, otherwise, if it's not if it, if it's not the query of one, we're going to do the values the, the stuff for query of two. So otherwise, we're going to set last answer is going to equal to this whole thing, which is going to be r at index at y mod by r at index dot size. So that's what I do here. I set last is equal to r at index at y mod r at index dot size. Okay. And this is just going to set this new last variable to equal to this. And then it said to push it back to or your answers array. So store this new value last answer to your answers array. So I just do a pushback. So I do answers dot pushback last, which is going to store this low value last. At the end of our for loop, we're just going to return our answer and that'll be done. So yeah, and I pass all the test cases. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. This is a tutorial on how to do dynamic array on HackerRank. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. Check you guys later. Peace.